Hi everybody, this is Jolina speaking. Today's presentation will be about the current and future dialogue on nuclear energy. Included are cases within the Netherlands and France. This presentation is on behalf of me, Elena and Jelmer, so we hope you like it. We'll start by reviewing some iconic events in the history of nuclear energy, followed by the sentiment of the topic and the voices we've discovered. Who's are they and what are the conversations like? Then we'll provide you with our insights on the problem regarding sustainable futures and the dialogue about nuclear energy. And lastly, how it could be improved. The next person you will be listening to is Jelmer, and later on you will hear from me again. To understand the sentiment around nuclear energy, we must understand where it comes from and therefore look in the past. This is a brief timeline including some important events that influenced the feelings around nuclear energy. In 1945, around 200,000 people died as a result of the two nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In 1973, a shortage of oil globally halted transport and sent many countries into a recession. It made people realize that dependence on foreign countries for energy can be very risky. In 1979, a nuclear reactor on Three Mile Island broke down, which led to stricter safety regulations for nuclear energy. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster led to 31 direct deaths and 4,000 predicted future deaths because of cancer and other radiation-related problems. It also created a 2,600 square kilometer exclusion zone that is now uninhabitable. In 1989, the environment and CO2 gained importance on political agendas. The first international conference on climate change was held in Noordwijk, in the Netherlands. In 2007, the first EPR reactor was built in France with a newer, safe technology. The Fukushima disaster caused an area the size of Belgium to become uninhabitable and 160,000 people to be permanently displaced. During the same year, the company TerraPower was founded, led by Bill Gates, who hopes to use depleted uranium as a fuel source, hopefully solving the nuclear waste problem. Around 2013, earthquakes in Groningen led politicians to agree that the country should start to phase out natural gas, meaning a transition to heat from other sources is needed. During the Paris Climate Conference of 2015, a global agreement was made to lower CO2 levels, creating urgency to look for CO2 neutral energy sources. And in 2018, Arjen Lubach dedicated an episode to breaking the taboo around nuclear energy and restarting the discussion. He succeeded as many people did start to become more open to again discussing nuclear energy as a possible clean form of energy. Mainly as a result of the historical disasters, it became a sensitive subject in dialogue, even named it taboo. Because the disasters impacted public health, it is a sensitive and controversial subject, especially because it also has many other related factors that are worth speaking about, and people do. There are multiple aspects related to nuclear energy that are cause for hope or concern and the emotional load this carries will cause people to want to speak out about it. Although it's all very much interlinked, voices about nuclear energy tend to single out what they find most important. The voices sound as for or against, but often relating to different issues. For example, against because of the high price of nuclear energy, or for because of technology making it CO2 neutral. Prominent concerns are based on safety of people and the environment because of knowledge of the past disasters and this knowledge conflicts with the other voices. You can imagine that at every major event presented in the timeline, certain voices have changed or shifted. For example, safety concerns increased after Chernobyl or enthusiasm about future technology increased after the founding of TerraPower. Conversations currently are a mix of a few of these different aspects. It can be on a micro scale such as we often have in class when someone mentions nuclear energy, at a birthday party when people show off their, their strong opinions and knowledge on certain subjects, or on a macro level, like European safety regulations. 
One interesting and important conversation from history is that of politician Christian Bataille and rural French protesters. It took place in the countryside of France, where technical experts said that it would be safe and cost-effective to bury nuclear waste. The public went crazy, saying that they don't want to live on top of a nuclear burial site. But I figured that if they were to say they were strategically preserving nuclear waste for possible future use, the public would be more accepting of it. And that's exactly what happened. Using the prospect of the future and a different frame of mind completely shifted the voices of the public from strongly against to actually being accepting of living close to nuclear waste. Using knowledge and arguments that we've collected, also by listening to prominent voices, we create visions of the future that to us seem logical and possibly quite certain. The futures can and will often be related to one of these aspects mentioned, such as Top right, the permanent destruction or loss of enormous pieces of land, homes, the economy, this is the affected region of Chernobyl. Or top left, the vision of small-scale, safe nuclear reactors made with modern technology will be safe and clean. Bottom right shows a future based on casualties of the past, with people affected by radiation poisoning. Or bottom left, a landscape filled with windmills because climate goals must be met without nuclear energy. It's hard to integrate these visions into one because they are very contradicting and can be emotionally loaded. Now, let's take a step back and ask ourselves, why are we currently in dialogue again about nuclear energy? Well, globally, people slowly start to notice the urgency of climate action. We now start to agree on the need to mitigate CO2 emissions and to not exhaust finite resources anymore. As time passes, pressure increases to reach the international climate goals. Coming decades, therefore, more deployment of renewables is key. Whether nuclear energy is also an option for the future energy mix remains a point of discussion. But if we want to reach these goals, aren't we dependent on nuclear energy? And so, should it be part of the package? It's these questions that require dialogue. The problem is, in a loud emotional discussion where arguments don't line up, it becomes difficult for decision makers at the top to take rational measures and lead the energy transition. Then what is it the future dialogue needs? The dialogue about nuclear energy needs sense making. Sense making by unraveling the jumble of arguments for and against whether nuclear energy should play a role in the current energy transition and how that should look. This should lead towards a comprehensible vision about sustainable futures. With respect to the sensitivity of the topic, awareness should be raised on the sentiment it arouses, and lastly, the dialogue should advance mutual understanding. Okay, since we are looking for a change in the current dialogue, we suggest following the discipline of anticipation also known as futures literacy. We say that scenarios about the presence or absence of nuclear power in the future energy mix should be explored based on the future instead of the past. This we want to achieve through co-creation with the various stakeholders associated with the nuclear energy debate. The past is a time and place that holds our experiences and with that our emotions. In this time and place, arguments about nuclear energy could literally explode. The future is what generates hope and fear and sense-making and meaning. It drives our expectations, disappointments and willingness to invest or change. By means of co-creation of future narratives, people will start to better understand the role that the future plays in what they think, say and do. It raises awareness on our relationship to change. This type of collaboration encourages and challenges individuals and groups to empathize and explore another's perspective on possible futures, which is exactly what we need. All right, this is the end of our presentation about the dialogue of nuclear energy. We hope you've learned something new today, and thanks for watching.